Hello everyone and welcome to the second tutorial about the HSC SIM. This tutorial is about the HSC SIM toolbars and menu items. In this tutorial we will go through the drawing toolbar on the left over here and also through the menu items in here. We can start by checking how to draw the custom drawing objects on the flow sheet. Here we have a line tool which works uh, in the same way as the stream drawing tool. So you can make corners and it follows the orthogonal choice over here. Then we have the ellipse tool uh, which allows you to draw ellipses on the flow sheet by drag and dropping as with the units. And then we have the rectangle tool which allows you to draw rectangular shapes to the flow sheet. The rest of the drawing tools work in the same way, except they allow you to draw different shapes on the flow sheet. It is also worth to note that these drawing objects never affect the calculations in any way. Next, we have a text label tool over here. It allows you to draw the text labels of any size for your flow sheet. Below that, we have the text box tool which allows you to draw a bigger text boxes for your flow sheet. These text boxes are especially handy if you want to make some kind of manual for your flow sheet. And finally, we have this picture tool over here, which allows you to insert any kind of custom picture for your flow sheet. Custom pictures can be, for example, Excel chart images or your own unit images. As with the streams and units, you can choose any object on the flow sheet and edit the drawing values either in the drawings tab here in the properties panel or up here. Next, let's try out the resizing tools over here. Before that, we clear the flow sheet and draw a simple flow sheet with few different sizes of units. Once we have done that, we can select the selection tool, hold control and select multiple objects and then we can see that these resizing tools are available. We can either resize the height, white or both at the same time. I click the same height and white and I can see that all these units were changed to the same size. After that, if we want the units to have equal spacing between each other, then you can select this equal horizontal spacing button, which will make the units to have equal spacing. After resizing and spacing of the units, I might want to align the units so that they are all on the same level here. So I, again I select the units and then I find the alignment tool over here, press align bottom, and then I can see that the units are nicely aligned. These tools can be used to make your flow sheet look nice. However, be careful when using the alignment tools, because sometimes if you use the wrong alignment tool, such as in this case the Align Center tool, you can see that all the units are moved on top of each other. This can cause you some extra trouble when making your flow sheet, so remember to be careful. For the streams, we cannot use the resize buttons, however we have a separate tool for making the streams look exactly the same. So in this case I draw four different sized streams, then I select all the streams and if I press this button over here, stream same shape, it will make the streams look exactly the same. Now what I need to do, I need to align them and then I can move them all to make my flow sheet again look nicer. If you want to rotate your objects on the flow sheet, you can use these rotation and flipping tools over here. Below them we have the layer tools which help you to make objects visible if two objects are intersecting each other. So for example if I draw another unit here, I can see that by default the last unit comes in front. But if I want to change this, I can select the unit below and bring it front. However, note that if you want to use the layer tools here, you need to be sure that the objects are located in the same layer. Normally, by default, 
the same type of objects are located in the same layer. So for example, all these units are in the layer zero. However, if I check stream, I can see that the default layer for the stream is layer one. So by default, the streams are always on top of the units. If you want to take a closer look at these default settings, you can press this Edit Pages and Layers button and see what are the default layers for different type of objects. You can also create your own layers here and also disable some layers if you don't want to see them. Next, let's take a look at the menu items over here. So the file menu, it contains the, all the basic file menu functionalities such as saving, opening and loading processes. However, there are a few additional tools here which are not part of normal file menu. For example, this add to archive button. This allows you to save model directly to a zip file and you can then easily send the model to somebody else if you want. We also have the save backup and backup manager here. The save backup allows you to save different states of the flow sheet to a separate files, which you can then at any time load from the backup manager. With the view menu, we can change the default flow sheet settings, set the object visibility, rename the aliases and change their use, and also change the default toolbar settings. In the toolbars, one very important button is the reset docking bar positions, which resets all these panels that you have here if in case you accidentally close one of them. So for example, if I close these properties, then I'm gonna, I can always get it back as it was by pressing this reset docking bar positions. And with the flow sheet settings, I can change the default look of the different drawing objects. So for example, if I want to change the unit font size default, I can change it to be a little bigger, put the font bold, apply, and then when I draw a unit, I can always see the new type of default font size. Next, let's check a few things about the alias names. So if I click a unit, I can see the number slash alias here in the process tab. If I change it now here, then I don't see any effect on the flow sheet immediately. I can, however, start to use the alias names by pressing here rename alias and then checking this use number alias name. Then all the objects on the flow sheet will start to use their alias name. One main difference with the normal name IDs and the alias names is that you can have multiple different units with the same alias name. We can also use this dialog to export all these data to Excel. The tools menu contain advanced calculation and information tools for the flow sheet. These tools won't be covered in this tutorial, but we will go through them later. The drawing tool menu contains the same things as the left bar over here. One exception is the visual copy, which allows you to create a visual copy of a unit or a stream to another page. The window menu is not used in this HTC version, and from the help menu you can find the HTC SIM manual and the about box. Now you should be able to use all the advanced drawing tools and also know the basics of the menu items of the HSC sim. This concludes the tutorial. Thank you for watching.